Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. I received a four-page passive-aggressive plea to join the HOA today, and it's absolutely hilarious. I've lived in this neighborhood for nearly 15 years and have never been a member. I've had a few brief run-ins with them, but nothing serious. Mostly, it's been the usual things like them trying to stop by and give friendly reminders about getting approval before doing anything to my house or yard. I'm friendly with most of my neighbors, and have heard stories about how displeased they've become with the board and the general chaos that seems to ensue. This morning my wife texted me saying we're getting a nasty gram in the mail from the HOA, she gets mail notifications that give her pictures of our daily mail each morning. So she saw it coming. Boy was I tickled pink to get this four-page document detailing all the reasons why it's so important for me to sign up and pay $70 per month. Let me share a few highlights. First, they claim that without massively increased memberships, the HOA will be forced to close by December 31st, 24. Next, they allege that without the HOA, property values will drop by 40%. They also warn that public roadways will no longer be landscaped. Mode. There's a line that specifically states many members don't use any of the facilities but still pay just to ensure their property values continue to rise. Here's the big one. The letter mentions multiple times how we're all just a big family of friendly neighbors and that we're in this together. However, there's a whole section titled, Who Are You Going to Call When?, that gives examples like neighbors working on cars on their lawn, something I've never seen but honestly don't care about. Ten renters living in a two-bedroom house and having parties all night, currently happening across from me, but they don't bother me, and neighbors with commercial trucks parked on the street. This last one made me realize these are all actual examples. My neighbor started dating a guy with a big truck and trailer that he parked in front of her house, which extended into the front of mine. I didn't really care because she said it was temporary, but my dog did lose his mind whenever they opened the truck or messed with the trailer. One day I saw what looked like police writing a ticket. I didn't think much of it at the time but now I realize the HOA must have called. Police officers don't just casually drive through our little neighborhood. There are multiple times in the letter where it says, don't tell us you don't like how things are were done previously. It's such a weird thing to say when you're begging people to join. It also says not to blame corporate owners who have started buying and renting houses because they pay their dues. Um what? Lastly, it talks about how low the dues are at $70 monthly, and how joining won't lower those dues but will potentially keep them from going up, or at least keep increases small. That $70 gets you access to an old pool, a run-down clubhouse, and irrigation for your yard that really isn't needed. I just watered my grass for the first time in eight or so months because we haven't gotten much rain lately. I probably won't have to water again all year. There are probably 100 or so houses in this subdivision. I can't imagine what they are doing with thousands of dollars of monthly dues, but I'm not contributing toward them just so I can request a copy of the records. The letter was almost comically insistent on its points. It was as if they thought they could badger us into compliance with sheer persistence. The list of supposed benefits was long, but all I could see were dollar signs and vague promises. Without HOA, property values will drop by 40%, they screamed. 40%, really? I couldn't help but laugh. The state of some of the houses around here made me question the accuracy of that statistic. My house isn't exactly a mansion but I keep it well maintained without any help from the HOA. Their fear-mongering continued with threats of unkempt public roadways. They seemed to think the mere mention of grass not being mowed would send us all into a panic. Maybe it works on some people but I can mow my own grass just fine thank you very much. Then there was the big family of friendly neighbors bit. I get along with most of my neighbors just fine without paying 70 bucks a month for the privilege. Sure there are a few annoying ones, but isn't that the case in any neighborhood? They went on to paint a picture of a lawless wasteland where people work on cars in their front yards, throw wild parties every night, and park massive commercial trucks wherever they please. I chuckled at the mental image. My neighborhood isn't perfect but it's far from that chaotic vision. The part about don't tell us you don't like how things are were done previously was particularly odd. It sounded almost like they were bracing for criticism. If they knew people were unhappy with how things were done, why not change their approach? Begging for more money while dismissing past grievances wasn't exactly a winning strategy. And let's not forget the dig at corporate owners who apparently pay their dues without complaint. It felt like a desperate attempt to shame us into compliance. 
but why should I care about what some faceless corporation does? I care about my own home and my own finances. As I continued reading, the letter tried to justify the $70 monthly dues by listing the amenities we'd get access to. An old pool, a rundown clubhouse, and irrigation for our yards. None of these were selling points for me. I'd rather spend that money on something more meaningful. The letter claimed that paying these dues would potentially keep them from increasing, but even that was presented with a lack of confidence. I started wondering about the financials. With around 100 houses in the subdivision, they must be pulling in thousands of dollars each month. Where was all that money going? The thought of contributing just to get access to the record seemed ridiculous. I had better things to do with my time and money. In the days following the arrival of the letter, I couldn't help but share the contents with my neighbors. We had a good laugh over the dramatic language and exaggerated claims. One neighbor, Jim, had his own run-in with the HOA when they tried to tell him his mailbox was the wrong color. Another, Lisa, got fined for having a garden gnome in her front yard. These stories only solidified my decision to stay far away from the HOA. I did hear some differing opinions, though. A few neighbors appreciated the order and structure the HOA supposedly brought. They liked the idea of someone enforcing rules, even if those rules seemed arbitrary to the rest of us. It made me realize that there are always two sides to every story. Despite this, the majority of us agreed that the HOA's tactics were more off-putting than persuasive. Their focus on fear and guilt didn't inspire trust or a sense of community. It just made them seem desperate and out of touch with what people actually wanted. One afternoon, I decided to take a walk around the neighborhood and take stock of things myself. I noticed that, for the most part, everyone took pretty good care of their homes. Sure, there were a few overgrown lawns and a couple of cars that hadn't moved in a while, but nothing that justified the HOA's doomsday scenarios. As I walked past the clubhouse, I peeked in the windows. The place looked as neglected as I remembered. The pool was closed for the season, but even in summer, it was rarely used. I couldn't see how these amenities were supposed to be worth the dues they were demanding. When I got back home I found my wife in the backyard tending to her garden. I told her about my walk and how I felt even more certain that we didn't need the HOA, she agreed, laughing about how they seemed to be trying to sell us something we didn't want or need. The weeks passed, and the HOA's deadline drew closer. More letters arrived, each one more desperate than the last. They tried new tactics, offering limited-time discounts on dues and promising community events that never seemed to materialize. It was clear they were scrambling, but it only made them look more pathetic. Meanwhile, life in the neighborhood continued as usual. The renters across the street kept having their parties, but they were respectful and never caused any trouble. The guy with the truck eventually moved it, and peace returned to my dog's world. And as for the supposed decline in property values, it never materialized. Houses were still being bought and sold, and prices seemed stable. I couldn't help but feel a bit sorry for the HOA, board members. They were clearly in over their heads trying to manage something that no one seemed to want. But at the same time, I was relieved that their influence was waning. It felt like a victory for common sense and individual freedom. In the end, I never joined the HOA, neither did most of my neighbors. The board eventually sent out one final letter, admitting defeat and announcing the dissolution of the HOA at the end of the year. It was a quiet end to a loud and tumultuous chapter in our community's history. Life went on as it always does. We continued to take care of our homes, look out for each other, and live our lives without the interference of a meddling HOA. The neighborhood didn't fall apart. In fact, it felt stronger and more united than ever. We had proven that we didn't need an HOA to tell us how to be good neighbors. We could do that all on our own. I want to preface this by saying I hate HOAs but want to weigh in on the pool thing. Our neighborhood pool is $425 for a family membership late April to early October, so about seven-ish months, Georgia. It's owned by a local pool company who keeps it up daily. Landscapes and plants tomatoes and vegetables for anyone to grab. It's a family pool so it's overrun by screeching crotch goblins most of the day, every day. It's probably not 300 feet from our house. There are pros and cons but there is no way we could have our own pool for that price. It's two of us and it ends up being something like $3 per visit at the end of the season. EH we walk there and if it was more effort we wouldn't do it but it works for us. It's nice to be able to come home from work and go jump in the pool. It's a handful of old people that bought built these houses back in the 80s for like $20,000. 
I was one of the first to start moving in when the market crashed years ago, and as they've started dying off, more and more younger people have moved in, and evidently most of them don't see the value in paying $70 a month for access to a pool. While I haven't had any serious run-ins with the HOA, I can definitely confirm that they are not nice, friendly neighbors. They are crotchety old FS that yell at kids and think they can boss people around. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.